the Jewish Week on JN1. I'm here at the Grauman's Chinese Theater on Hollywood Boulevard. Where else would we start our special report on the Jews of Los Angeles than here at one of the most famous movie theaters in the entire country? Now, why is it called the Grauman's Chinese Theater? That's because a Jewish kid from Indiana named Sid Grauman built this place. Some of the most famous films like The Wizard of Oz premiered here. The Oscars used to take place here. And you probably don't know it, but it was Sid Grauman's own idea to put the hands and feet of stars in the wet cement here. Join me now for a very special report on the history of the Jewish community in Los Angeles and some of the very famous faces that built Hollywood. Shalom, shalom. Welcome to Hollywood. You have arrived. Welcome to the city where dreams are born and where glitz, glam, and blue skies never die. There are 650,000 Jews in the city of Angels, including Mayor Eric Garcetti. The community's history is synonymous with the silver screen. They invented the movies. The Goldens and the Mayors all came out here. And so they invented Hollywood, invented Beverly Hills. That's no exaggeration. Jews built almost every major movie studio in Hollywood. The Goldwins and Mayors, that's MGM, set up in 1924 by theater owner Marcus Lowe. Paramount Studios was the powerhouse driven by legendary Hungarian-born Jew Adolf Zucker. And yes, you guessed it, Universal Studios, Warner Brothers, and 20th Century Fox were also started by Jews. But it wasn't just dollar signs that drove Jewish immigrants into the movie business. To a great extent, the Jewish moguls came to Hollywood in order to escape their past and to reimagine themselves, and not just themselves, their country. What better way to become American than to help tell stories on the silver screen, a new medium that would reach millions. Actors, comedians, directors, and writers, Jews showed a knack for telling stories. I think that we were born, um, you know, hearing stories, reading stories. The Torah is the greatest story. And so there's a natural part of us that are storytellers. We're also business people. In movies and then television, the award-winning performances are too many to count. Do we run Hollywood? No, but are there many, many Jews who are in significant positions in studios, major directors, whether it be a Steven Spielberg or, you know, major writers and actors? Yeah, we are, we are, we are here. The king of interviews, Larry King, is anything but shy about being Jewish. I'm, I'm super Jew. <laughs> King shot to fame on CNN talking to the powerful, the famous, and everyone making headlines in between. I stopped by the studio of his new talk show on Aura TV the morning after the Grammy Music Awards. Welcome to Larry King Now. Our guest is the great star Martina McBride, the country music singer, songwriter. She's won every major musical award. With the ease of an old friend, he chatted up Martina McBride, who has sold 12 million albums and has had several hits on the country billboard charts. I think, uh, I think being Jewish added to my ability to communicate. Jews are very good at that. I guess it's in the DNA to be expressive, uh, to use your hands, to talk a lot. King grew up quite poor in Brooklyn, but says his home was rich in Jewish values. I like the Jewish concept. I like the emphasis on, on education, the importance of family. So all those values were instilled in me. I'm not a very religious person. Like, I'm not religious at all. But I'm very Jewish in all other aspects. Jewish food, Jewish culture, Jewish flavor, Jewish humor. It's his love of Jewish culture that King says he's passing on to his two sons. It makes no difference to him that their mother is Mormon. Intermarriage here in Los Angeles is higher than in any other place in the country, above 65 percent. The West Coast has historically been a more open, liberal place. Being Jewish and having a Jewish identity is more challenging here. My next stop took me up this winding driveway to the famed Playboy Mansion. It's the crown jewel of Hugh Hefner's magazine empire, which made millions by putting famous women nude on the same pages with literary and journalism giants. No, Hefner is not Jewish, but his right-hand man in the business for more than 50 years is. My Jewish upbringing and my relationship to other people, but especially to Jews, very much relates to my philosophy of life. You know, it's a live and let live kind of a thing. It's the understanding of people. An art collector and a member of a reform performing arts synagogue, Rosenzweig moved from Chicago to L.A. in the 1970s. 
he launched many of Playboy's international editions. Rosenzweig's enormous success has enabled him to do something very Jewish, to be charitable and give back to the city he loves. I was a founder of a museum of contemporary art. Um, I'm very much involved in Los Angeles uh, County Museum. He's also on the Beverly Hills City Council, where he helped build this brand new Annenberg Center for the Performing Arts. Just a few blocks away sits the Simon Wiesenthal Center and the Museum of Tolerance. We're on the front, on the front lines defending the Jewish people, whether it would be anti-Semitism, delegitimization of Israel, uh, denial of the Holocaust, and on the other hand, promoting tolerance. All the power players in Hollywood know Rabbi Marvin Heyer, from Spielberg and Streisand to Will Smith. Look, Frank Sinatra was the first person that introduced us around. And Frank Sinatra, he was the chairman of the board. He was a member of our board of trustees. He was a very large contributor to the center. And almost the top names of Hollywood, you name them, and they've been associated with the Simon Wiesenthal Center and the Museum of Tolerance. Rabbi Heyer was able to win over so many famous faces to his cause with the unwavering belief that the Holocaust is relevant to Americans. If Hitler ever conquered the United States, what would he do? Just get rid of the Jews? And with the African Americans and other minorities and Latinos, he would say, that's fine? Not at all. He would go after them immediately. The Museum of Tolerance opened in 1993. It begins with America's history of prejudice and inequality and ends with the tragic images and relics of the six million Jews murdered by the Nazis. Support for Israel runs strong in the LA Jewish community, but it takes many forms, from conservative APAC members to J Street to more left-leaning groups. I think that as long as we're passionately arguing about Israel, we're okay. It's really indifference that's the enemy. At lunch, I headed where else but to the famous Canner's Deli on Fairfax Boulevard. What do Jewish people like to do? They like to feed people. And it's a certain hospitality that you just have that you want to just extend to the community. That hospitality has kept customers coming to Canner's for more than 50 years. It's a family-run diner with a Hamish or friendly environment. It's become a landmark that captures life in L.A. We have been in many movies and many TV series. The cast of Mad Men will sit in Cantor's next. But by far the coolest part of Cantor's is the Kibitz Room, a bar in the back where bands jam each night. The Red Hot Chili Peppers and the Wallflowers and many other people who have performed here sometimes for the first time in public. So it's known for that. The Doors and Joni Mitchell played here. Guns N' Roses were regulars before they hit it big. Guns N' Roses, not only have they performed here, uh, my cousin Mark wrote a book called Reckless Road because he was their manager because he was the only one that had a car. For kosher keepers, eating in this neighborhood is easy. The Pico Robertson area is now the new thriving modern Orthodox hub of Los Angeles. Signs in Persian attest to the Iranian Jews who began arriving in the 1970s and now number an estimated 50,000. The Orthodox Eula Girls High School is nearby. It's one of more than a dozen Jewish high schools in L.A. More than three dozen day schools serve the younger kids. I think we are producing the most educated, most committed students we have ever produced. Not far away is the Yeshiva High Tech High School. It's changing the paradigm, offering a blended learning curriculum. With a mix of online lesson plans and traditional classes, kids can speed through some subjects or take their time with others. I think we see both conservative streaks and uh, innovative streaks in uh, Los Angeles in religious terms. The non-denominational Ikar congregation is one of those innovative streaks. Rabbi Sharon Braus has reached all kinds of Jews with her ability to make ancient texts and teachings relevant today. At the nearby conservative temple Sinai, Rabbi David Wolpe has made headlines too. He announced he will conduct gay marriage ceremonies. The time had come to say to people, to men who love men and women who love women, the way that the rest of us love the opposite sex, to be able to say to them, you can share the same kind of sacred union that we have. The landscape of L.A.'s Jewish community is changing, but like Hollywood itself, most see a happy ending. We have, thankfully, young, very talented um, Jews 
committed to rethinking the contours of the Jewish community. We'll never disappear. We'll never disappear. I'm next to the star of one of my personal favorite Jewish entertainers, Barbara Streisand. She's not only an amazing actress and singer, but a tremendously generous philanthropist to the Jewish community here in Los Angeles and in Israel. Now, Los Angeles will certainly continue to attract Jewish talent from all over the country. Join us on our next special when we go to the sunny city of Miami and check out the booming Jewish community there. From Hollywood Boulevard, I'm Jordana Miller reporting for JN1.